What is up, everybody? This is the Wild Nutrition Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Heskett, and this is episode 60, another Unapologetic Friday. If you are unfamiliar with Unapologetic Fridays, it is 15 minutes with no editing or anything like that. It's literally just me riffing. Uh, today, I didn't even write down any notes. Usually, I have notes. So we're just going with today's topic. I just had a cup of coffee, if you can't tell from how fast I'm talking. So I also have a lot of shit to get done today as well for this podcast. So we got 15 minutes on the clock. I curse. I get passionate about things. So if you're in the car with kids, maybe you want to not listen to this episode because sometimes there's a lot of F-bombs. Sometimes I don't curse at all. It just depends on how passionate I get. Um, people will be like, why do you curse so much? It's literally like, that's how I talk, especially when I get passionate about things. It's not me doing it on purpose. I don't curse just for the sake of cursing. So fuck it. Let's get going. 15 minutes on the clock. Today's topic is something I'm going over with, with one of our clients going through um, intuitive eating right now and learning what intuitive eating is. And that is creating a connection with your food. Because oftentimes we're talking macros, we're talking protein, carbs, fat, vitamins, minerals, and all that bullshit, which is fantastic. It's actually important to know that information to make consistent changes. However, when it comes to not stressing about food, to have a good fucking relationship with your food, which is important, you need to develop some sort of connection relationship, something with it. And if that sounds goofy, silly, I'm going to give you an example. If you're an uh, American or Canadian, Thanksgiving. Immediately, you just had some sort of emotion, maybe for most of you, probably positive, maybe negative, but I know for me, very lots of positive emotions around turkey and cranberry sauce and mashed potatoes. And that's an example of emotionally eating is a real thing. And we can connect, create that connection. And this is one thing that um, somehow I have stumbled upon it through gardening and hunting and all these different aspects where creating that connection with food is very, very powerful. Um, but you don't have to be a gardener or a hunter. So let's, what, what direction? Again, I did, I did not take any notes. So let's, uh, let's first talk about, so we need to, um, first discuss about macros and things. So humans did not know, like we didn't have to track macros and things in the past. So this concept of calorie tracking is a little foreign to many of us. And while it's a great tool, it's probably not where most people want to live. Uh, there's a handful of people I know who can do the calorie tracking and it not destroy their mental health for a long time. And it's fine, but not many. Otherwise, America wouldn't be in the situation it's in. That's just facts. Like we are, we're in a beastie crisis. So we need to uh, kind of like look back and see what people were doing. And one of the things that they were doing was having this really intimate connection with the food they ate, the, with cultural connection and family and friends and other things. And probably some of the reasons you're struggling with food is the weekends where you're with friends and you're having some wine or you go out for beers and you're having good food. And those things are important. When we look at like, I think it's called like the wheel of wellness. There's some wellness wheel thing. One of them is community. Like well, you can't be completely healthy and be isolated. Humans are even the most introverted of us, like myself, we can't be completely isolated. Like we need to be around other humans to be healthy. This is why solitary confinement is so bad. It is terrible for people. We are tribal creatures. So we need to be in a tribe. So counting calories and things, that's great for when we're chasing a very specific goal. But then when we want to get out and maintain, we need to go back to a way of eating that connects us to our food, connects us in a way that doesn't cause stress and makes us more present. And this is going to get a little woo-woo, but hear me out here. So current issue is we can go to the grocery store and buy fucking anything we want with no effort. Do you know how much of a pain in the ass it is to make like a good pie? Like it's a fucking pain in the ass to get that crust perfect. Do you know how long that would take? Do you know how many calories additional that would burn 
if you went through the entire process of making a really good pie, but I can go to the grocery store and get like a cheap one that won't taste very good, but it'll cost me like eight bucks from the freezer section and I'll grab that or maybe 12 bucks from the bakery and bring that home, zero work. And I could do that every single day. Every single day I could eat an entire fucking pie. Croissants, pain in the ass to make. Know what you can do? Every day you can go and buy a croissant, no effort on your part. And the what I'm bringing up here is you don't have to do any of these foods. You, We can get foods import from all over the world and it's awesome, but at the same time, We'll get strawberries imported from Mexico in America in the middle of January when it's not strawberry season. We will get all access to all these foods. So something I like to tell people is eat seasonally. Eat when the foods would actually be in season. So right now we're going into summer when I'm recording this. So it's like eat those early summer foods. Like right now it's cherry season here in Pennsylvania. Um, rhubarb's coming to the end of the season. Um, asparagus is done, but snap peas are in season and green beans are about to start. And we might get some early tomatoes. Like those foods are in season. Early corn, maybe. Um, but those are the foods that are in season now. And then fall, it's like you have your winter squashes and then your brassicas come back, your kales, your broccolis, things like that come back in the fall. And you're going to eat those foods then. And they're only around for a short amount of time. Like cherry season is very, very short. You're going to eat it. You're going to enjoy it and eat in the way that, you know, I'm not even going to say ancestors, just a few generations ago. That's how they ate. Like if we just go back to like the early 1900s, that's kind of like how, like cherry season came and went. Blueberry season came and went. And yeah, we will buy blueberries year round, but like during blueberry season, we double down. During strawberry season, we double down. And it makes it more fun when you look forward to these foods. Cause a lot of times we'll just go through and like eat frozen broccoli year round. And like, I get it. It's cheap. I did the same thing. But if you can mix that up a little bit with like, oh my God, like it is now this season, like we can enjoy it. And one, they taste the best, but they also have the best nutrition because if something's being imported from halfway across the world, it's picked unripe, which means the nutritional quality is decreased. It's not going to have as many vitamins and minerals because the plant didn't have enough time to absorb all it needs for that. And this is something that's, you know, it's just a different way of thinking. Uh, the other thing is Michael Pollan, writer of The Omnivore, Omnivore's Dilemma, and uh, many other books. Um, while I don't agree with everything he says, he makes a lot of good points. And one challenge, I saw this lecture he gave, one challenge he gives people, and it's something I tell people who start to go through intuitive eating, is at least once in your life, not, not every day, once in your life, make everything you like to eat. Make it by hand, pasta, potato chips, sausage, one, one time. You don't have to do it all the time. In fact, it would be really unrealistic for me to say that because a lot of us don't have schedules that I allow, including myself. Like I don't have time to do all those things. That's the glory of having modern day grocery stores and stuff. It, it's fantastic, but we want to change our mentality around food. So go back and Let's try to like make it. And then you understand the process. And then when you go and buy those foods, you're like, wow, like this could be one. If you buy the cheap shit, you're like, this could be so much better. Like this is fucking terrible. That's not how it should be. Like grocery store croissants, like fucking awful. But when we go and we buy like a really good croissant from certain baker bakeries in the area, and it's like, okay, it costs like eight bucks. Like, you know what? That was worth it because I know the amount of work and the pain in the ass it is. But also because of that, I'm only going to have it once in a while. It's going to be a special treat. I'm going to savor it. I'm going to enjoy it. So it's a challenge of try to do those things. Once a week, try to make something new that you've never made before that you eat all the time make popcorn from scratch if you've always made like sto like the microwave popcorn like it's one that you're gonna save a shit ton of money because it's like a dollar fifty for like a one pound bag of just popcorn kernels like that's a great place to start do that and great place to start make pies make other baked goods do sourdough e easy to get started hard to master 
but it's a place you can start and start to appreciate those foods. And then when you go, you're not going to mindlessly eat it, especially when you make it yourself. Like you do not mindlessly eat that because you're like, this was a fucking pain in the ass. Now you might overindulge a little bit, especially when it's fresh. Like when I made uh, sourdough focaccia the other week, you might overindulge. That's okay. But you're like, oh my God, put so much work into this. And that's the other aspect that goes with it. We can buy these high calorie foods, croissants, donuts, cakes, pies, cookies, just buy it from the store with no input. You will eat an entire package of cookies rather than making it. And if you make a cookie, you're going to say, you might spend, you know, clean up and everything. It might be 30 minutes to an hour, but that's 30 minutes of an hour of like standing and moving around versus sitting. So it, that is now calories burned and counting towards, you know, your seven to 10,000 step goal where you are burning more calories than if you were just to sit, watch Netflix and then grab that packet of cookies or chips and eat it. And the biggest example I always give is, uh, um, potato chips, because do you know how fucking messy potato chips are to make? Like you have to fry that shit up and it's going to splatter everywhere. And if you make them yourselves, you're going to be like, oh my God, I'm never doing that ever again. And it changes the way you look at potato chips. Um, you're going to not view it in a way that it's just something to mindlessly eat. Cause you're like, oh my God, this is such a pain the ass what like so much work had to go into making this like i know the process like why would i mindlessly eat it and you're not gonna be perfect but you're gonna catch yourself sooner of like oh shit like wow like that was like x amount of potato like when i did this myself oh shit that was such a pain in the ass and i just devoured all that and you're gonna catch yourself and it's a, just a change of your mindset and same thing applies when you like hunt or garden, like for example, hunting. And people are like, why, why do you get so excited? Like, look, like outside of hunting, like I can't get access to that. So during the season, like when I hunt and I harvest an animal, that's, that is it. Like we have to try to make this last an entire year. Like if we overeat it um, or we don't get enough, like it, once it's gone, it's gone. I can't go to the grocery store and just buy it. You can't with wild, true wild game. There are some farms where you can get certain wild game, but true wild game, you cannot get outside of hunting season. So that is that. You can't go anyplace else. Plus, I do the entire process. I process it myself. So there's a lot of input for me. So then it's like I'm more invested. And that's another keyword here. I'm more invested in that food. So like if chicken goes bad, like probably it's gone bad for you and you're like, God, oh, this sucks. That was a waste of money. And you throw it out. You hunt and you pack, you like you harvest, you process it, you package that, you get in the freezer and then you forget that you got some out and that it was left downstairs on top of your freezer. And you come down two days later and you're like, fuck, which that happened to me, which is why I could say that. It hurts. You're like, son of a bitch. That fucking sucks. It's like if you had like a $300 steak that you just left out and you're like, shit, motherfucker. Yeah, that's exactly how it feels. Same thing a little bit with gardening. Now, zucchinis, everybody knows the joke with zucchinis. If you don't, it's basically like, you know, someone gardens because they have way too many zucchinis. But that is a, a real thing of... Uh, zucchinis are just so prolific that you get so many, same thing with cucumbers. But when you grow something, you put, do all the inputs, you do all that. And then you harvest your own food. You respect it a little bit more. You want to use it. You want to try new things with it. You want to eat it right away and taste so fucking good. Cause it is actually like truly ripe. So that's another way where you can start to develop this relationship with your food and improve your relationship with food is also through hunting, gardening, fishing as well. Uh, if you harvest, get you capture your own fish. Those are other ways. But for the most people, you know, hunters here, people who garden already, like you kind of already know this. You can kind of like, if you're a hunter, but you don't do a garden, that's a little bit easier than if you're a gardener trying to get into hunting. Obviously there's nuance and you can message me about that stuff. But the point I'm trying to make, everybody can do the Michael Pollan challenge. 
of trying to make more things yourself. Like my, my, we did not harvest enough venison for me to do it this year. So that's caveat number one for me to do the challenge, but I want to make like all the, the Italian sausage we need for a year. Cause we use a lot of it. Um, I want to do all that with venison, but we have to harvest a certain amount of deer. Cause I, we need to make sure all of our other needs are met first, which means usually like, well, going into this year, it's probably going to be like only if I get number six, which would be a lot, but, uh, Myself, my wife, and two daughters, we go through a lot of venison. So that's, um, that is my thing that I want to do at some point. Um, but you can make your own pasta. Like there, there's lots of things that are easy to access and hard to master, but easy to access. Make your own pasta. You just need like flour and eggs. And then you have to roll it out and do that whole process. And you're probably going to fuck up a couple of times. And then you're going to be like, oh, yeah, maybe maybe we shouldn't just like devour pasta like crazy. Um, or maybe it is doing some other, like just baking more or cooking certain things and just understanding that process so you better understand, especially things you just, just start with the things you like to eat and you buy from the grocery store on a regular basis. Start there. Make your own yogurt once. That's a great, like healthy thing that you can try. Um, that's not super difficult to do if you have a slow cooker, instant pot, or you can do it on the stove. So there's tons of options out there. The easiest thing I can tell you right now is just take a look at your grocery cart next time and anything that's like prepackaged, try that. Just like look it up and try it once a week. Like try to make something. Um, and so... I'm going to finish off. We're past the 15-minute mark, as usual, but I'm going to finish off with uh, kind of like my story here with growing up and my mom just always try, like baking and trying different recipes and different – so uh, my mom, uh, she can't have gluten. She can't really have dairy. Um, she, she can have more dairy now than um, she could in the past, but in the past it was like crippling. So she has – a tons of food allergies. So she was always trying to make, um, different desserts and stuff in ways that she could eat it. So there's always this experimentation and trying to make new things. And then it was kind of like with a lot of things, like once it's gone, it's gone. Um, so great examples. And still to this day, like talk about nostalgia, um, while blackberry season, it's super short. Like it's like one week here in Pennsylvania. So depending on where you're at, it's probably about the same. Uh, and if you've never had them, they're fucking delicious. They're seedy, but they're way better than regular raspberries. Um, so black raspberry season would come. It's always right around that 4th of July time. And my mom would always make like blackberry cobbler, blackberry pie, stuff like that. So every year around July, I look forward to that. And there's also this one cake my mom would make. And she fucking hated making the cake. Not because it was difficult, because it was so fucking easy. But we all liked it. And that was like the 4th of July cake because it didn't take super long. So it didn't heat up the whole house um, because the air conditioning was not the best in the old brick farmhouse I grew up in. So... I have these memories, so it's like I don't want those foods outside of those times. And it makes these special occasion foods where I have this connection, this emotional connection. And having it outside of the those times would just ruin it. Well, like you wouldn't have that connection or memory. So it's very specific things. So you can probably think back to your own childhood or just try to create those things. So uh, like something new we've created is there's this amazing uh, Nordic Christmas bread that I started making two years ago. And my brother tried, he's like, holy shit, this is fucking delicious. It's super easy to make, but really, really good. We're not Nordic by any means. <laughs> but I got this massive tome of a Nordic cookbook because I'm a giant nerd when it comes to recipes. I want a cookbook for the entire entire globe. The goal is to get one, at least one cookbook for every region in the world. So made this bread and now it's like a thing like okay every year we're going to make this bread it's completely new so you can do the same thing it's great around holidays but also just that's a great way to start but also do it in your day-to-day -day life as well so without me rambling more and getting really off topic we're going to end it here so happy fucking friday everyone it was a little less unapologetic today but i think it's an important topic an important mindset thing for you to think about when it comes to food of it's not just numbers and shit. Like, 
we have an emotional connection, connect yourself emotionally. Enjoy certain foods. Don't just look at the carbs, the fat, the protein, the calories, good food versus bad food. Connect to your food. For long-term health and sustainability with your diet and your results and everything else, you're going to need to do it. You can't just look at it as numbers. It'll be very frustrating and not very fun. And that's just not a great way to live life for most people. Some people can do it, but chances are if you're listening to my shit and you've been listening to it for a while, you're not one of those people. If you're a bodybuilder, chances are you're not listening to my podcast. Those are the type of people who can do that shit. Great. That's awesome. If that's not you, start connecting with it. Start building those things and then make them special. Make the food special. Do special things with it. Make special recipes. Do those things and you will change your mindset around food and then it will be much easier when you need to diet uh, or go into maintenance or just the way you view food going into the future with everything. But thank you again for tuning in. Happy fucking Friday. Now go kill out there this weekend, guys.